Good morning. I'm Congressman Doug B. Ryder. It's my pleasure to introduce uh, Senator Bob Corker of Tennessee. Overwhelmingly reelected to a second term in 2012, Senator Bob Corker serves as the chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee, and also he's an active member of the Banking and the Budget Committees. Senator Corker was Tennessee's Commissioner of Finance and Mayor of Chattanooga, but he spent most of his life in business. It is indeed widely recognized that it's been Senator Corker's perspective, his results-driven businessman's perspective, that allowed him to make an early mark in the Senate on fiscal, financial, and foreign relations issues. As an advocate for using limited foreign aid dollars more effectively to advance U.S. interests, Senator Corker is leading efforts in Congress to modernize emergency food assistance programs in a way that will elim eliminate waste and inefficiencies to help more people meet their needs. I only regret that I didn't have a chance to serve with Senator Corker. I left about two years before he arrived, but please join me in a rousing welcome for a statesman, a man of unquestionable integrity and principle, Senator Bob Corker of Tennessee. Well, it's good to be with you this morning, and uh, Congressman B. Ryder, I thank you for sharing with me what life after service here is like. Uh, I know you've been incredibly productive, and, and uh, leave me uplifted about what it's going to be like nine months from now. But thank you for your many years of service here and your focus on foreign relations issues and now hunger. And the same to all of you. I'll probably be the most brief speaker of all. Uh, that you have here today. The program I want to talk to you about is Food for Peace Modernization. We have a section in the Ag Bill, which hopefully is going to be reauthorized this year, that focuses on feeding people around the world. And we're thankful that our farmers participate in the program the way that they do. Um, in traveling the world with uh, Trey, who's sitting out in the audience here and seeing the many famines that are taking place right now, four of them are man-made, uh, the big four, and people are starving all around the world. We've become even more focused on making sure that the dollars that we have are used in the most effective way possible. Right now, when we have an emergency that takes place um, in a place like uh, uh, Uganda, where we, were, where we were not long ago, or think about a place like Syria, where it'd be very difficult to get U.S. commodities into a place like Syria. We have some holdups in our program which make it very difficult. Um, uh, Title II of the Farm Bill uh, allows U.S. commodities, focuses on U.S. commodities going to these places uh, where we have such severe needs, and in many cases, they're very difficult to get to. In this program right now, it's 100% U.S. commodity preference. And just to put it in perspective, a fraction of 1% of U.S. total exports in the farm area. So it's a, the program is minuscule as it relates to the well-being of our farmers around the United States of America. We've actually, uh, obviously, as you can imagine, in Tennessee, the Farm Bureau is a really big deal. And actually, the farmers in our state, to me, represent the best of our state. It's like the Moody's rating of, uh, of all good things. And when I spoke to them at their annual conference last year and shared with them the fact that in this commodity program, we've got to ship these goods over on a U.S. flagged ship. In many cases, it takes six months for these commodities to get to places where people are starving. Six months. And when our farmers realize that only 30% of the money allocated to this program goes towards agricultural products, the rest of it is on overhead and shipping and transportation, 
Our farmers rose up, rose up and said, this is ridiculous, ridiculous. I mean, our farmers are proud of the fact that they feed the world, right? I mean, they're the best our country has to offer. And so when we have explained this to them, they rise up and say, this is ridiculous. As a matter of fact, Zippy Duval will be here later today, great American. And I had dinner with him about a year ago and explained to him what was happening. He couldn't believe it. And so the American Farm Bureau Association has joined in and helping us, helping us with this program. Now, here in Washington, there are very strong lobbies. And sometimes the lobbies don't actually represent the people that fully that they think that the people think are being represented. It's, it's an interesting thing. You have, you have staffers and you have people who try to protect programs. And so it's difficult to make change. Think about it though, 30% of the money that goes into this Title II program actually goes to food. It has almost no impact whatsoever on, on total farm exports. But what happens in this program is that these commodities are shipped in and a lot of times uh, we'd be so much better off just buying the money, buying the crops in the area, by the way, and sustaining the people in the area, right? I mean, you could create in, in these regions, if you use dollars instead paying local farmers to feed people, you would be building economies there. Let me tell you the other thing that's just totally idiotic about this program. The, the food goes into these areas, and like I said, sometimes it takes six months to get it there. Six months. People are starving. And instead of using money, like I just mentioned, let me tell you what, people are forced to, to do what's called monetization. So they'll sell these crops, these commodities, excuse me, at 40 or 50 or 60 cents on the dollar. Now, what does that do? It totally depresses, totally depresses in those areas, the ability of those agricultural communities to actually th thrive. I mean, it'd be not unlike dumping taking place here in our own country that our farm, you know, our farm lobbies would go nuts over. So look, I'm just asking that you have an open mind. I know we have a very diverse group of people here today. I hope that you will help us feed 9 million more people a year by just changing it so that instead of it being 100% U.S. commodities, it would be 25% U.S. commodities. Farmers would still be playing a huge role in helping make sure that people who are hungry around the world have food. But we'd be also feeding 9 million more people a year. Many of you have traveled the world, I know, and wouldn't be here if you weren't caring so much about hunger around the world. I don't know if you've had the opportunity to see these young children who are stunted, stunted for life, stunted while they waited for food to arrive and as they starve for the rest of their life, they're going to be undeveloped. We can change that dramatically by making a small change to what we do in our ag bill. I hope you will support it. Thank you for letting me talk about it. Thank you. Good morning, Senator Corker. Walk this way. Okay. This uh, Food for Peace program, I, I love this quote here, directly quoting you back to, to you. Here in Washington, there are very strong lobbies. I'm surprised everybody didn't do just a face palm for that comment. It's like, duh, of course. I'm asking everybody to say, what is their optimism level? What is your optimism level for this actually happening? Coming back next year to the Global Food Security Symposium 2019, Will you be going, yeah, and we got it done. So the first thing that has to happen is the food, uh, I mean, the, the ag bill has to be taken up. Um, just based on the way you see things operate around here, um, I'm going to give it a 50-50 shot that the ag bill even is authorized this year. Does, does somebody else want to give different odds? Okay. <laughs> So, so the, the first step is, and I'm leaving in nine months, okay, although there are many champions. Uh, uh, Chris Coons, uh, my, my counterpart on, in the Senate, a Democrat um, from Delaware, is also very supportive of this effort. He will be around. Um, but but uh, so it's 50-50 that we're even going to have an ag bill this year. And then to overcome, 
uh, just the there's just the entrenched. Let me. I mentioned the U.S. flagships. There's a maritime lobby here that where very few people are even employed in this program. There are two New York shippers that have some of the most dilapidated equipment ever known to man that are making millions and millions and millions of dollars off shipping these goods on vessels that could never be used in wartime. Never, okay? Never. But, but this program is set up so that we have this excess if we ever want to deliver... Uh, you know, war materials overseas. And yet these, these vessels could never, ever, ever, ever be used. And yet they're living off this. So you've got these entrenched enters. Part of it is the Maritime Union, okay? Think about it. I said 100% U.S. flagged ships, which means that, or 50% U.S. flagged ships, which means that people are, you know, employed by this too. It's almost a welfare program. Matter of fact, I'm just going to say it since we're live streamed. It is, in fact, a welfare program. Um, and so these, so... these are the words of a man who is, is leaving in nine months' time. No, no, no. I've been, I've been, this, this is the candle no, 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 of only nine I, months I, I've ago. Been here the, I've been that way the whole time, I promise you. <laughs> the whole time. Um, but uh, so the odds are, are, not, are not... I'm going to give the odds 35%. I thought we were at 50. 50% the bill gets taken up. Okay. If the bill gets taken up, we've got a lot of work to do. Right. And, uh, and, but, but look, let me, the stats, 9 million more people would be fed each year with this minor change that has negligible, no effect on farmers around our country. So I'm hoping that with the enthusiasm that will leave this conference, the odds will go up substantially. I hope yeah. so too. Senator Corker, it's always a pleasure. You have coffee to drink. You have a hearing Thank to you. prep for. I will walk you off the stage. Thank you. And the audience will go wild. Yeah.